everybody. For your next project, you are going to create an animal inspired planter. This little planter is made out of a pinch pot base with a few different add-ons. It features a hole in the bottom so that water can drain out. And I also made a tray for my owl to sit on. This is optional, you do not have to make one, but I added it so that when my owl gets its plant watered, the water will not run out onto my tabletop. My inside is nice and clean, and the outside has lots of decoration. You can choose to create any animal you'd like. I would recommend making it a little bit simpler. I kept mine to just the wings added on, the eyes with two levels, and the beak. So it was nice and easy, nothing too crazy, and lots of beautiful added texture to my surface. I created a plan before I started drawing, and then using the pinch pot techniques we learned in our previous project, I created this adorable little planter. If you've never created a pinch pot before, keep watching as you'll see me create this owl planter. Today I'm going to show you how to create your own clay pinch pot planter. So you can see that I have my own plants in the art room that I love very much. These are called a polia plant and I actually repotted this plant from a plant that I have at home. Planters are usually just a very simple pinch pot shape and they almost always have a hole in the bottom. A hole is for water to drain out of. So my planter over here, it's attached to the base and the tray, and it has a little hole down here. So I'm going to start with a piece of clay that is about half the size of my drawing. I created a sketch that I would like to make to scale. So I know that I want my pinch pot to be about the size, if not taller, than the planters that I have in the classroom. And I'm going to start by taking my large piece of clay and forming it into a round sphere. Now that my sphere is ready, I can start to create a pinch pot. I'm a righty, so that means I write with my right hand. So I'm gonna hold my clay in my left hand. I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna push it down until I am close to the bottom but I have not poked a hole through the bottom. You'll see this hole straight in the middle of my clay. And pinch pot is the same motion or the way you create a pinch pot is exactly as it's called. It's a pinch pot, so you pinch. So I'm gonna take my thumb on the inside and I'm going to pinch down with my thumb on the inside and my middle ring and pointer finger on the outside. And as I pinch, the clay is going to grow and it's going to turn into a more open cup. The more clay you use, the larger your pinch pot is going to be. You're gonna wanna stop pinching your clay when it is about the thickness of a pencil. So I have quite a bit to do still. And I can tell that down at the bottom of my clay and on some of the sides of my clay, it is not the same thickness. So one very important piece of information when you're making a pinch pot is that you want the rim or the mouth of your clay to be the same thickness that I'm pinching here, all the way down the side to the bottom, if you were to pinch on the inside and the bottom, and up to the top. So it should be a nice even thickness that looks something like this. 
So one thing I'm gonna do to make everything a little bit easier as I'm working, on my canvas covered table, I'm going to press my pinch pot on the table. As I press down, I am pushing and pushing and pushing until my pinch pot is the proper thickness. As you're working, you may start to notice that maybe your pinch pot isn't as large as you want it to be. So looking at my sketch, I need to add a little bit of height to my owl. So I need a little bit more clay at the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some clay from my extra clay bag and I'm going to make what is called a coil. A coil is basically just a rope or a snake of clay. So I'm gonna make sure that my clay is all joined into one piece and then by rolling it along the table and when I roll, I go from the top of my hand to the bottom of my hand, trying to make this as round as I can get it. My coil right now is flatter than it is tall. So I'm gonna press it down and then as I'm rolling, again, I'm pressing. And I wanna make sure that my coil is the same circumference as my pinch pot, so the same distance around. I am more than good to go. I'm gonna take my pin tool and I'm going to cut off any extra. Using my scoring and slipping method, I'm gonna attach my coil. Now, I'm going to press my two scored sides together. So I'm pressing my coil down onto my pinch pot. And you'll notice that my coil is thicker than the pinch pot that I am placing it on. And that's okay because I'm gonna smooth it out and change the thickness. So now I have a coil, but I don't want there to be a separation between my pinch pot and my coil at the top. So now I'm gonna take my finger and I'm going to smooth out the line that separates my pinch pot from my coil. You can also use some of your clay tools. And I'm gonna continue smoothing until my coil on the outside is gone. When my coil is completely smoothed out, I'm gonna continue with my pinch pot and make sure that I like the height that it is. On the inside, I still see a little bit of that coil. So I'm gonna go back in with my clay tool and smooth out that seam. And if you have an uneven top of your pinch pot, you can go right in with your pin tool or one of your sharpened pencils and kind of cut off that edge. Now I'm noticing also while I'm working, I have some wrinkles and some creases starting to form. So I'm gonna make sure that I take my sponge with all the water squeezed out and I'm gonna start to smooth out that surface. I'm gonna continue working on my pinch pot until it is the size and shape that I want and it looks nice and clean and ready for decoration. Now you may notice that your pinch pot might be wider than you would like it to be. So if you have that problem, one thing you can do is I'm gonna cut out a pizza slice, just a skinny one, pull that off my project, and then I'm going to fold or overlap my two pieces of clay, and I'm gonna smooth them back together, completely joining the clay so that there is no seam and the clay is now one. Now if I do that on one side, it's probably gonna look a little bit uneven if you don't do it on the other side. So this side looks like I only need a very teeny tiny pizza slice. So I'm gonna do the same, but a little bit smaller this time. If you notice that you have a section of your pinch pot that's a little bit too thin, if you would like to, you can even take your sponge with all the water squeezed out and smooth the inside a little bit.
this won't matter as much in the end, but I don't want it to look too messy in there. I just want it to look nice and smooth so that when I put my plant in there, so I'm gonna make my bottom nice and stable by tapping it on the table. Now I have a flat base and I'm gonna do the same for the top of my owl. Now I can start to add my decorations. So on my plan, I have a few add-ons that I would like to do. I wanna add on a beak, two eyes, two wings, and then I think I may even add some ears on when I'm finished. So I'm going to take a round object from around my desk and on a flat piece of clay that I created by taking scraps of clay, smushing them all back together and making sure that when I squeeze them back together, there is no air pocket. I'm gonna add a little water, just a little bit at a time. Roll that back into a ball. And then taking my rolling pin or a flat round marker I'm gonna roll a nice, smooth, fat, flat piece of clay. What you can also do to make sure that your clay is the perfect thickness, take two pencils. The pencils will stop your rolling pin from pressing your clay down too thin. So I can't roll this clay any thinner, and that is actually the perfect thickness of clay. Now that all of my attachments are added on securely, I can start to add lots of fun details to my little owl planter. So I think I'm gonna work on its tummy, and I like the idea of these little feathers. I used a texture tool that I had available in the classroom to create these beautiful star textures on the wings. And then I'm gonna use lots of just very simple supplies that I have handy in my art kit to create details around the owl's eyes. It's up to you how much detail you add. I'm gonna focus on the front and then add a little bit of detailing on the back, but I'm not worried too much about the back side since I'm primarily going to see the front of my owl. So holding my owl nice and still, a few things I wanna do before I start adding texture is I'm gonna go in with my carving tools and I'm going to make sure that the eyes look nice and even and then my little owl's nose. It's up to you what animal you create as you know but I'm gonna make sure that my owl has lots of details Anytime you want to practice a detail on your clay before you attach it or carve too deeply into it, I'm going to take my pencil and very lightly trace out on my surface the design that I'm hoping for. That way, as long as you press nice and light, you'll be able to smooth any mistakes out with your fingertip or a sponge with no harm or damage done to your project. As you're working, you might start to see these little pieces of clay form on your project. I call these clay boogers. And the clay boogers are just the clay that you're pulling away and dragging off of your sculpture as you're using your pencil or your clay tool to design details. So when you're working, you can take your finger and you can very gently 
pluck or brush away the boogers for them to disappear. What I even like to do is take a squeezed out sponge. You can very gently rub or run the sponge over top of the surface and that will clean up the area again. You'll still have a little bit of these as you're going, but you can even take your pencil and wipe them off on your sponge as you're working to prevent them. These will not harm your project. In fact, most of them are going to want to flake off and fall right off before your project goes into the kiln. But better to get them off now than to worry about them later. Now that my clay animal planter is complete, the final step is to add a hole in the bottom. It's important to add a hole in the bottom of any clay planter because like I mentioned, that's where the water is gonna drain out so that when your project or when your plant is watered, there will not be any water damage to the roots. So I'm taking my loop tool and just going straight into the bottom and creating a hole. Then right around that hole, I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna sign it like an artist. You can do your initials or a fancy artist signature. After you're done creating your animal planter, you can create a small tray for the water to drain into if you would like. You don't have to do this, but I just made a small flat pinch pot for my owl to sit on so that after I water my plants, there will be no water that drains out onto my tabletop area. So that's an optional piece if you would like to, and you can make it match if you'd like, but it's completely up to you. You can buy these small little trays to catch the water at plant stores, and they just fit to make sure that they are a little bit larger than your planter. Now that you know how to make your own planter, I can't wait to see what you create for your pinch pot animal planter. Please begin sketching and share your designs on Google Classroom before you get started with your clay.